Well, hello folks. It has been a while. I feel like I haven't done a video in weeks and weeks, even though I've done a few driving um, videos. Um, I am, I've just been busy and I went away camping for a few days and then we're going camping again this weekend. So um, I wanted to get a couple videos out there. So I'm going to do this uh, viewer collection review and then tomorrow I think I'm going to do another one just to get some of the older ones. I, I have like a, a queue of about six, I believe. Um, by the way, I am drinking Pinner Throwback IPA, Oscar Blues. It's all right. It's not bad. It's it's one of those um, low alcohol, it's 4.9% low alcohol session style IPAs. Um, it's kind of been a big trend in the IPA world because IPAs tend to be really you know, seven, eight, nine, ten percent alcohol, really strong. And for those of us who like to drink, to like to throw back some IPAs, it's nice to have a lower alcohol version too. Um, this one's all right though. It's kind of refreshing. Um, anyway, so um, oh, also I'm listening to Mark DeClive Lowe, who's like a DJ slash keyboardist slash trip hop, electronica, weird kind of stuff. Um, all right, so this, this to start things off, this viewer collection video is from Derek, AKA his YouTube name is Bovie2K, B-O-V-I-E-2K. And I'm gonna read his email. Um, he's got a great collection, which I'll show you a picture of in a moment. Um, and then we'll, I'll read the email and we'll talk about it. All right. Dear Johnny Casual, I recently found your channel a month or two ago and I've been hooked. Thank you, Derek. I was wondering if you would be willing to do a viewer collection review for me and, and provide some advice moving forward. Um, all right. So he is looking for advice here. And one of the things I, I said in response to him in an email, um, you know, or I've said to people that have asked for my advice, me doing a video is, yes, it could involve me giving advice, but uh, but part of the the good thing I would imagine is that you get response from other viewers, many of whom have more experience and knowledge about watches than I do. I'm just creating the context for that discussion to happen. So viewers, please give your advice um, to Derek as well. So this is his current collection. Let's take a look. Okay, that is a nice collection, Derek. I like it a lot. Um, so, we have a Bremont Solo WHSI. All right, I think that's the white dial one. I have it open on my computer screen. You know, I'll read them. Let's just do this, because I already showed the picture, so you've seen the, the better quality. Now, let's take a look at the picture of it. All right, here we go. So, we can just talk through it. So there's the Bremont, I believe, right here, right? Um, then we have the Breitling Navitimer 01 Honor Flight Limited Edition Washington State 42F out of 56. I love this watch. I want, Derek. <laughs> um, and you say that's your home state, and you hope to pass it along to your son. Awesome, awesome. You're, that's obviously a keeper. Um, Rolex Submariner 114060, right there. Believe that's the no date, no Cyclops window. That's a nice one. One of the one of the nicer subs, I think. Um, Omega Seamaster 300. Um, and then you give a long. I won't read the whole number. I believe that's this one right here. That's the beautiful newer version chronograph. Um, Omega Seamaster Professional 300 chrono. No, hang on. That's the professional chronograph. I guess this, the, uh, oh no, th right, so the, the one that you just, the first one is this one. This is the newer, see, this is the reissue Seamaster, okay? And then here's the Seamaster Professional Chronograph. Um, and then you have the Omega Speedmaster Apollo 11, 40th limited edition. That's that nice one that looks like it has the moon or something. Um, and then you have the <laughs> outlier of the collection. 
the Swatch System 51. And then you have a Citizen Skyhawk AT, which I don't see on this picture. And then you have this monstrosity here. What is this, Derek? How dare you? <laughs> I believe that is an Apple Watch, folks. An Apple Watch. All right, so you get a sense of his collection. I hope that's not too disorienting to pull the camera across. All right. Sold watches. Tag Heuer Aqua Racer Day Date. First mechanical watch, but never wore after I purchased the Planet Ocean and Pelagos. Okay. Um, Victorinox Swiss Army, Dive Master 500 Mechanical. Impulse purchase, but still a cool watch. Didn't wear enough. Also, timekeeping was too erratic between wrist and winder. Clearly, I'm spoiled by my chronometers. Um, Omega Planet Ocean, large size, 29005182. Sold to purchase my Seamaster Chronograph. That's interesting. Usually people go from the Seamaster to the Planet Ocean. I, you know, I have to say that I, I'm, I'm more of a fan of the um, Seamasters than the Planet Oceans. And I know that the Planet Oceans have, I believe, fully in-house movements or considered higher quality watches. I don't know. I think the, the Seamasters are more interesting. Um, Tudor Pelagos, 25500TN, another cool watch but couldn't satisfy my want for a Submariner. After the Submariner came, didn't get enough wrist time. All right, so, my regular daily wear is split between the Submariner, Seamaster 300, both on bracelets and the, both on bracelets, and the Omega Seamaster Professional 300 chronograph on a NATO. Um, the Bremont Solo and Omega Speedmaster Professional are worn mostly on weekends and the Breitling was re reserved for special occasions but it sometimes slips into daily wear for a couple of days here and there. I never wear the Citizen and only use it for setting my other watches. The Swatch is just a fun watch to wear from time to time. That's interesting. I never, that's a whole nother, um, <laughs> another kind of beater is the, the quartz watch that you have to set your your non quartz watches, your your automatics. All right, so it looks like so you so you split your time mainly between the Submariner and the two Seamasters, with the Bremont and the Speedmaster um, more of weekend, and, and then the Breitling for special occasions. All right. Um, all right. Anyway. Anyways, I feel it's a solid collection, but I have some anxiety on the sides, but I don't really see where I can cut back. Because of the limited edition status, the Speedmaster and Navitimer aren't going anywhere. Um, just to pause for a second. Limited edition. I don't think that's enough reason not to sell a watch. I think the Navitimer, you have other reasons not to sell it. It's got some special value to you. You plan on passing it along to your son. Um, so it would be nice to keep the Navitimer, but I wouldn't keep the Seamaster or the Speedmaster, the Moon Watch, um, just because it's a limited edition. If you really love the watch, then keep it. But if it's if you're just keeping it because it's a limited edition, I, I would definitely sell it. Um, neither is the Seamaster Chrono because my wife has has the matching 36 millimeter Seamaster. His and hers, nice. The Submariner is also locked in my collection. That leaves the Seamaster 300 and Solo. Um, I've gotten close to selling the Solo a few times, but I always fall back in love with it, and I love the brand, so I don't think I can part with it. I love the Seamaster 300 as well. So you can see my first world conundrum, <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> I feel like I want to pare down, but every time I look at my collection, I can't part with anything. Um, moving forward, the only watches I can think about adding to my collection are the Tudor North Flag, Blanc Pan Bath Escape, and Seiko SKX Blue Dial. The SKX came down the, may cut, I assume you're talking about the the, uh, the monster with the blue and the gold, but I'm not sure. Um, the SKX may come this year, or are you talking about the SKX 00, that model? I don't know. Um, either way, it's a $150, $200 watch. That may come this year, but the Tudor and Blanc Pen are years off. To get the Blanc Pen, I feel the SM300 would have to go to balance out the collection. Not sure what I'd do if I would if I got the North Flag. The Seiko would just be a fun watch as I've always wanted one on the Jubilee bracelet. In closing, I've also added an Apple Watch Sport to my other wrist. 
I like it for the notifications, but it will never replace the mechanical watch as my main timepiece. Um, and Derek also included a donation, which I really appreciate, Derek, especially as I am now unemployed for a while until I work, start working part-time again in the fall. So that's very, very helpful. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot here. Oh, oh, also, one more thing. At the end, you in a separate email, you said that um, you added to your wish list the Omega X33 Skywalker, which you say you actually had on pre-order forever but kept getting delayed, bought the SM300 instead, then it came in a week later. Okay, so I assume you don't have the Omega X33 Skywalker. Speedmaster 57, 9300 movement. I really like that one a lot. Um, GMT, that's the bi compacts one, I believe. Um, GMT Master Blue Black. That's Is that the Batman? I believe that's a really sweet Rolex. It's one of my favorite Rolexes. All right, so I actually, this is my take. Um, don't get anything. Don't buy any watches right now. And don't sell any watches either. Um, now, you wrote this to me about two and a half weeks ago, and I apologize again for the delay. So I don't, you might be feeling differently now than you did then. But my first impression of this is just, you're, you're feeling some anxiety about the size of your collection, but you can't think of what to whittle away. Your collection isn't massive. I count, you have eight watches. Um, one of those watches is not really, well, you have nine watches, including the Skyhawk. So one of them is, a, is your timing watch. The other is the System 51, which is in a different category, just a fun piece. If you sell it, it'll be like 50 bucks, right? You're not going to get a lot for it. So those two aren't even really in your main collection. Nor is the Apple Watch, all right? The Apple Watch is it's, it's a whole different category. So you cut those three out, and you're left with six watches. Your, your collection is of six watches. And then you, you gave us your, your sort of schedule, so to speak, um, and you don't, it's, it doesn't seem like you're, it doesn't seem like anything's going to waste. You know, you have, you, you wear your Submariner and your, your two Seamasters as daily wearers. Three watches is a nice group of daily wearers. That's what I do as well. I have this, this Breitling. I have the, and my two blue Seamasters. And that, those are my daily wearers. And I'm actually probably going to get rid of everything else, I think. I know that's a whole nother <laughs> topic. And then you have the, the Nava Timer, which is such a great watch. It's, it's unique in your collection. It's going to be an heirloom piece. Um, and the limited edition Speedmaster. So the, so the thing that, I guess the only, oh, and then of course the, um, the Bremont, which is kind of a fun watch that you wear every once in a while. So for me, based upon what you said, the, the possible, of those six watches, if, you're, if you really have to get rid of one, I would look at either the Speedmaster or the Bremont because to me they're the ones that you're not wearing a lot and I, I haven't heard in your email everything else you kind of like you said something to the effect that you really like the watch it means a lot to you it has some value to you except for the Speedmaster Ex the only thing you said about that that was a value was that it's limited edition status. And to me, that's not enough. That's, there needs to be more. Do you like the watch? Do you really enjoy it? When you, when you have it on your wrist, you look down at it and say, yeah, that's, that's, that's a watch that I want to wear. Um, if you do, then fine, then keep it. It's a great watch. I love it. I think it's a really, really cool piece. But I could see why, you know, if it's not, if it's not grabbing you like the other ones, then, um, you know, I, I get it. Um, the Bremont, it's not, I'm not a big fan of white dials. Um, personally speaking, that's my least favorite of those six that you have. Um, but it's your only white dial watch. So it does bring balance to your collection. It does have a nice, you know, it, it bring it's, it's, it stands out, you know, you know, it's, I would say it's your, of the six, it's your, your lowest end. It's your least nice watch but it's also the one that differentiates itself the most. So it has a place in your collection. Um, so yeah, my, my first and foremost advice is don't sell anything and don't buy anything. You have a list of a uh, wish list right now and it doesn't seem like any of them are like, God, I have to have this. 
maybe when you get that itch to buy something to spend money to lay down the plastic or whatever, um, then get the Seiko. We're, we're talking a couple hundred dollars. It'd be a fun watch. It wouldn't really be part of your core six. It'd be more part of your auxiliary or secondary group. Um, so, yeah, just just sit with it for a while. See how it plays out. See what, you know, and, and I would certainly really, you know, as you wear the Speedmaster and the Braemont, you know, keep one part of your mind, how much do I like this watch? Do I really, is this something that I can't live without? And if you eventually find, well, I don't need this and I can sell it, then you, then you can free up a little bit of space, a little bit of breathing room, and then readjust to the smaller collection, whether it's you sold one of them or both of them. Um, but if you find that you really love them, then just just settle into it. Try to try to be willing to go with those the watches that you have, and your collection's not so massive. I mean, I can see how you know. I I have gone from huge collections down to a collection about the same size as, as yours. Although I wear fewer of the watches than you do, um, but I can see how. You know, even though I once had 18 watches or something like that, I actually once had over 30, and I certainly wasn't wearing all those. You know, you go down and you want fewer and fewer and fewer. And, and as somebody said in a comment recently, you know, the, I've, I've certainly found that the fewer watches I have, the more I enjoy those individual watches. But again, at the same time, there's not a clear way forward for you. And, and, and I wouldn't push it. I wouldn't rush it. I wouldn't sell something just to just to you know deal with that anxiety it doesn't sound like you have that much anxiety you said um, I, f uh, I have some anxiety on the sides but I don't really see where I can cut back so yeah hang in there Derek don't sell anything for now gradually evaluate the Speedmaster the Bremont um, see how it plays out there's no there's no need to rush it I mean, unless you're desperate for the money but then that's a whole different category um, and it's the same with buying. I wouldn't, I, it sounds like, you know, even the way you phrase, moving forward, the only watches I can think about adding to my collection are, that implies that you're not like dying to add any of them to your collection. So hold off on those. Hold off on the, um, the Omega X33 Skywalker, which I have to remind myself what that one is. I don't remember. Um, X33. Oh yeah, that's kind of an interesting watch. It looks like looks like an Anna Dig model. Um, so yeah, I again sit tight for a while, see how your collection plan pans out. Eventually, I think you'll get clarity. I mean, I I think we make this huge mistake when we try to force issues. Um, sometimes time just like you know. Um, you know, solves it. You know, one thing that does come to mind, if you do find that, that, I mean, clearly you're a big Omega fan. It seems like they're your, your favorite. Um, if you do find that the limited edition Speedmaster, you don't like that that much, sell it and buy the, the 57, 9300. I would go for the blue dial with, with leather on leather. I think that is really sharp. Um, but yeah, I you know as I was saying, we we, we tend to force the issue. We, we we make decisions because we think we have to make a decision. It sounds like you don't have to make a decision, as you called it. It's a first world conundrum. So hang in there, give it some time, um, and you know eventually you'll find that even some of the ones that are on your wish list are gonna fall away, and you'll be like, well, do I really want that anymore? Maybe not. Um, you know, there's just a natural flow to it. And, and I think this is where watch collecting really is sort of symptomatic or it's a microcosm of life that that the anxiety is feeling like we have to change things, that things aren't right as they are. And actually, they're fine. Your watch collection is great. You have a really nice collection. Um, and you have several pieces that I would like to own, to, uh, own someday. Um, certainly the Speedmaster and the Chronograph Seamaster, um, the the Breitling, maybe even the Rolex, folks. <laughs> um, 
And yeah, so give it some time. I hope that helps you. Um, let me know what you think. Hopefully you'll comment below um, and we'll hear what the viewers have to say. All right, later. Session style IPAs. Um, it's kind of been a big trend in the IPA world because IPAs tend to be really, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten percent alcohol, really strong. And for those of us who like to drink, to like to throw back some IPAs, it's nice to have a lower alcohol version too. Um, this one's all right though. It's kind of refreshing. Um, anyway, so um, oh, also I'm listening to Mark DeClive Low, who's like a DJ slash keyboardist slash trip hop electronica weird kind of stuff. Um, all right, so this this to start things off. Well, hello folks, it has been a while. I feel like I haven't done a video in weeks and weeks, even though I've done a few driving um, videos. Um, I am, I've just been busy and I went away camping for a few days and then we're going camping again this weekend. So um, I wanted to get a couple videos out there. So I'm gonna do this uh, viewer collection review and then tomorrow I think I'm gonna do another one just to get some of the older ones. I, I have like a, a queue of about six, I believe. Um, by the way, I am drinking Pinner Throwback IPA, Oscar Blues. It's all right. It's not bad. It's it's one of those um, low alcohol. It's 4.9 percent low alcohol selection, Derek. I like it a lot. Um, so we have a Bremont Solo W H S I. All right. I think that's the white dial one. I have it open on my computer screen. You know, I'll read them. Let's just do this, because I already showed the picture, so you've seen the, the better quality. Now let's take a look at the picture of it. All right, here we go. So we can just talk through it. So there's the Bremont, I believe, right here, right? Um, then we have the Breitling Navitimer 01 Honor Flight Limited Edition Washington State 42F out of 56. I love this watch. I want this viewer collection video is from Derek, AKA his YouTube name is Bovie2K, B-O-V-I-E-2K. And I'm gonna read his email. Um, he's got a great collection, which I'll show you a picture of in a moment. Um, and then we'll, I'll read the email and we'll talk about it. All right. Dear Johnny Casual, I recently found your channel a month or two ago and I've been hooked. Thank you, Derek. I was wondering if you would be willing to do a viewer collection review for me and provide some advice moving forward. Um, all right, so he is looking for advice here. And one of the things I, I said in response to him in an email, um, you know, or I've said to people that have asked for my advice, me doing a video is Yes, it could involve me giving advice, but uh, but part of the the good thing I would imagine is that you get response from other viewers, many of whom have more experience and knowledge about watches than I do. I'm just creating the context for that discussion to happen. So viewers, please give your advice um, to Derek as well. So this is his current collection. Let's take a look. Okay, that is a nice collection.